Hey everybody, it's Jeremy here with Practical IT Channel. Today on Windows Wednesday, I'm introducing a utility that's been around for a while but is brand new to me. And the utility is called Free File Sync. While we're going to be installing and testing this on Windows today, it does run on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. More on that later, but let's go ahead and get it downloaded and installed. So we're on the Free File Sync website, freefilesync.org. Go to download and download link right there. and select the Windows version and save and it's a pretty small file and I actually already had it downloaded so I probably got it installed too so let's check the start menu free file sync appears I have not installed it so let's go ahead and do that right now We'll say yes, accept the agreement, which is the GNU public license, next, 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 and it'll do its little copy process and finish. Now, uh, we'll launch this. Free file sync and it looks a lot like what you might have seen in an FTP client you've got a source area and a destination area you've got buttons on top to compare and synchronize and you can save profiles on the left hand side for the sync jobs so we're going to minimize this for just a moment we're going to open up Windows Explorer we're going to go out here to network and we're going to uh, we're going to just connect to uh, 55 download okay and we're going to just throw in a new folder here called B-Link and that already exists we're gonna say no uh, let's take a look inside B-Link uh, okay so that's where I dump the uh, image backups so we are going to make a couple new folders we're gonna make one called documents and one called videos okay and then we'll bring our free file sync back up and so we're going to browse and we're going to find our documents folder here on the Windows 11 machine and select folder and for the destination side we're going to come down here that was Lord Nikon download well makes me connect again and documents alright so if we right click on synchronize we can do mirror which is a one-way sync and select compare and it comes up with all the files on the desk on the source that are not existent on the destination and if we say sync say so don't show that again and start it will go ahead and copy files over now granted there's not much on this machine so we can go ahead and close that and we can save this profile as videos uh, excuse me as documents okay <clears throat> and so if we select new for a new profile we can do browse again 
and say we want to sync videos which shouldn't be much on here either so we got that selected on the source come over to the destination go up one level and select videos select folder change sync to mirror compare and synchronize now the program is going to work exactly the same on Mac OS and on Linux. The one caveat I have found to this program working well is on my M1 Mac Mini. In the particular use case I was exploring on this machine, I was able to crash said Mac Mini, which was the first time in three months of owning the machine that I've actually crashed it. In this particular use case, I was not going to an external hard drive. I was doing what I'm doing on this Windows machine, but with much more data. I was going to the same location out here on this network attached storage to the 2020 mini folder and on documents which has a huge number of files because it's got all my files brought over from the old Mac mini but also on movies which has all my source files for the YouTube channel, the sustained transfer, I'm assuming, was what caused the system to lock up and reboot itself. Now, I've still got to dig into some log files. I have sent the report of the crashes to Apple for hopefully some analysis, although since this is an open source tool, I doubt much is going to come of it, but the fact remains on the old, the Intel Mac Mini, the system has worked flawlessly. And so far on Windows machines that I've tested it on, I've had zero issues. So when would I recommend this particular tool? Well, there are a few places that I would find something like this very useful. One, if you have an external hard drive that you want to sync files to, this is great. Two, if you have a relatively small amount of files that you want to sync over the network. Again, tool is amazing. Three, if you're not using an M1 Mac Mini or M1-based Mac system currently, uh, again, I find this to be a pretty amazing tool. Now, there are alternatives to this. Of course, you could use something like OneDrive or Google Drive or some such thing to synchronize files to a remote location. And if you're comfortable with those services having your files, more power to you. There's also an open source tool called SyncThing. This does require to have parts of SyncThing on both the client and the server. It's not directly applicable if you're going to an external hard drive. However, if you are going to a network drive, it could be. So there are options out there. My goal with this video is just pointing out another one of those options. Is this going to work well for everybody? No, probably not. Does it have its use cases where it makes a great tool to know about and have in your arsenal? Yes, absolutely.
And on that note, I'm going to keep this short and wrap it up. Do what you do with the like button and the subscribe button. Feel free to leave comments. I do look at each and every comment that comes into the channel before they go live. Stay safe out there. Happy computing. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.